Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and welcome to the daily A level maths tricky question number two. And this question I chose because there are a couple of top tips which I feel would be very helpful. And also, I would like to give a shout out to Christian M, who solved this question the fastest in my class today. Well done. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the question. A curve is given by the equation sine x plus cos y is equal to 0 0.5. We've got a given domain for x and y, and a point P lies on C. The tangent to C at the point P is parallel to the x-axis. So if the tangent is parallel to the x-axis, it means the gradient is 0. So dy by dx is equal to 0. The fi uh, says find the coordinates of all the possible points P, justifying your answer. So first step is I'm going to differentiate this function. Sine x differentiates to cos x. And if I want to differentiate cos y, I have to do that implicitly. So if I'm differentiating cos y with respect to x, then that's going to be tricky because cos y is in terms of y, not x. So what I'd like to do is I'd really like to differentiate this with respect to y. That would be great. That would be much easier. But at the moment, these two things are not equal. Well, how can I make them equal? I can multiply the top by dy to cancel the dy on the bottom, and I can divide by dx to get my dx as it is on the left-hand side. So that these two can cancel, and then we have equality. Okay, so what that tells us then is I need to differentiate cos y with respect to y, and that differentiates to sine y, or minus sine y, sorry, and then I multiply that through by dy by dx. And that, in essence, is the top tip of how to implicitly differentiate. Okay, and then when I differentiate uh, 0 0.5, I get 0. So now I can make dy by dx the subject. I can write that cos x is equal to sine y dy by dx. I can divide through by sine y, which is going to give me dy by dx is equal to cos x over sine y. And like we said before, we need that to equal 0 because the gradient is equal to 0 when it's parallel to the x-axis. Now, second top tip, whenever I have a fraction equal to 0, for example, u over v, if that equals 0, then that just implies straight away that the numerator, in this case u, is equal to 0. So that's my next top tip. If ever you have a fraction equal to 0, you just consider the numerator equal to 0. So in this instance, I just consider that cos of x is equal to 0. OK, so let's take cos to the minus 1 of 0. And that gives me a value of pi over 2. OK, my third top tip is that as soon as you do cos to the minus 1 or sine to the minus 1 or tan to the minus 1, you straight away find your second value. And we do that by, if we have cos, we need to do 2 pi minus the first value. And if I have sine, I need to do pi minus the first value. And if I have tan, I need to do pi plus the first value. So it's so important that you know these three formulas to get the second value. So in this case, we have cos, and I need to do... 2 pi minus, and that's going to give me 3 pi over 2. And I'm going to write my solutions out like this. Because this gives me the first and second solution. And sometimes I might actually need more solutions. I might need the third and fourth. And I get that by adding 2 pi to each of these two. So that will give me 5 pi over 2, and that will give me 7 pi over 2. And sometimes, furthermore, I might need the solutions prior to the first and second. And I get that by subtracting 2 pi. So that gives me minus pi over 2. And this one will give me minus um, uh, 3 pi over 2. OK, now what we do is we inspect to see which ones fit into our domain. So our domain is between minus pi over 2 and 
3 pi over 2, not equal to 3 pi over 2. So this one is good, and this one is good, and all the other ones need to be rejected. Great, I've got two x values. Now once I've found the x values, I need to find the y values to get myself a coordinate. So now I need to sub these x values into my equation in order to find y. And this is my equation which we started with. So I'll write sine of minus pi over 2 plus cos y is equal to 0 0.5. And I'll also write sine of pi over 2 plus cos y is equal to 0 0.5. Sine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1. So this will give me cos y is equal to 1.5. And that's out of the domain of cos, because cos needs to be between minus 1 and 1. So therefore, we cannot have a value of cos y equal to 1.5. So we must reject this solution. And in fact, we must reject x is equal to minus pi over 2 because it's not going to give me a correct y value. And rejecting this solution is important because you need to show this in order to get the full marks in this particular question. Okay, over here, this is equal to 1. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So I get plus cos y is equal to 0 0.5. This gives me that cos y is equal to minus 0 0.5. Okay, let's find the value of y then. So we write that y is equal to cos to the minus 1 of minus 0 0.5. And this gives me a value of, sorry, 2 pi over 3. Then once again, as soon as I do cos to the minus 1 on my calculator, I will try and find the second value for cos, which is 2 pi minus the first value. So 2 pi minus is going to give me 4 pi over 3. And then the next thing I do is I add on 2 pi to the first one to see where that gets me. And if I add on 2 pi to that, that's going to give me 8 pi over 3. And that's going to be too much because I know that y needs to be um, less than pi. And already I can eliminate these two as possibilities. But I'm not only going to add on 2 pi, I'm also going to subtract 2 pi from my two values. And if I subtract 2 pi from this one, I'm going to get minus 2 pi over 3. And then if I subtract 2 pi from this one, I'm going to get minus 4 pi over 3. And now we can select which ones are inside the range. So the y value range needs to be between minus pi and pi. So the ones I can select are this one here and this one here. OK, so what does that tell us? Well, it tells us the values for p, the possible values for p are two, pi over 2 for x, and its corresponding y value of minus 2 pi over 3. But also, there is another one where we have, again, pi over 2 for x, and in this case, 2 pi over 3 for y. And we are done. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked that, and if you did, please do like the video. That would be greatly appreciated. And subscribe for more content. And also, let me know in the comments if there's a particular topic you would like me to cover in the next edition. Bye for now.